Hey guys, Jafar here. This video will cover the seeds, equipment, growing, genetics, and finally, how to sell your farm to produce a scrap profit. In total, there are nine seeds that you can plant and start growing. These include berries, hemp, potato, pumpkin, and corn seeds. You can either find these seeds by locating the respective plant and picking them up or consuming the food to get their seeds. You can directly plant the seeds in the ground without the need for built equipment. Seeds grown from the ground don't require any maintenance from the player, such as watering them, and may be recommended if you have a compound. Doing so will mean the crops will grow much slower when compared to farming indoors, but might be worth it if you can't be bothered with the farming equipment. Let's quickly look at each statistic and condition for growing a plant and expand on these topics later when talking about equipment. Starting with the conditions, we have the light requirement. A plant can get its light requirements from either the sun or placing a ceiling lamp directly above the planter box, otherwise the crops will not grow and eventually die. Next is the water condition. Water is essential and must be regularly maintained unless your planter box has an excess amount. Water can either be dropped on the crops using a bucket or through an irrigation system. Moving on, we have the ground condition. Naturally, the planter box starts with a ground condition of 67% with outside terrain depending on the biome and ground type. The ground condition for the planter can be increased using fertilizer. Next is the temperature and can be increased by warming up your house with an electric heater. The temperature in desert biomes will provide close to 100% temperature conditions. Finally is the overall condition which represents light, water, ground and temperature condition. The overall health value will always be the same as the lowest condition, meaning even if you have other conditions at 100%, the overall health will remain low if one other condition is low. Fluids within the game behave much the same as in real life. Water will flow downstream within hoses without the need for fluid pumps. Therefore, if you place your water storage containers or collectors on the roof of your base, you can pipe the water down into the equipment without the need for electrical pumps. If you have your water containers on the ground floor, you will need a fluid pump to get the water running to the sprinklers or other equipment. To start effectively farming, you will need some initial equipment. There are multiple tiers of equipment you can use to farm your crops. At tier 1 we have the basic farm which is the cheapest and easiest to craft. For tier 2 we have the comfortable farm that utilizes additional equipment to make things easier to expand. Finally is a tier 3 farm which now includes water pumps and purifiers to make getting water a thing of the past. There is also a tier 4 farm that includes full automation, however that might be covered in a separate video. You'll also need to unlock multiple farming and power generation items if you don't already have them. Go to your level 1 workbench and unlock the tech tree path which contains the bucket, water purifiers and piping to distribute the water. You'll also need to go to the tree path with the power to unlock the battery and solar panel, so you can power your pumps and lights. For the first tier, you'll need at least a planter box, bucket, composter and light source, such as a ceiling light. The total workbench cost to unlock these items is 155 scrap, or 195 for the large planter box. You can either use the small or large planter box depending on your housing. The small planter box can hold a total of 3 seeds, while the large can fit 9 and requires a level 1 workbench blueprint to unlock. Next, you will need to provide water to your crops using a bucket to gather fresh water from a lake or river stream. This will be your tier 1 watering system. With the bucket full of water, head over to your crops and left click to dump the water. You should see the soil become darker as it's now wet. Also hovering over the planter box reveals how much water it currently contains. Make sure to always have excess water in the planter box for the crops to consume. A composter and fertilizer aren't necessary to stop your crops from dying when within a planter, however are easy to make and along with a good supply of water and light, can get your overall plant condition to 100%. With a composter down, place food items inside so they can be broken down into fertilizer. Remember to split up your food items within the composter, since each slot decomposes separately. Horse dung is the best item for producing fertilizer, generating 10 per, with fish being the next best, generating 0.8 per. With the fertilizer, open up the planter and place it inside. The crops will instantly consume a certain amount of fertilizer and receive its benefits. 
so remember to always have an excess amount of fertilizer in the planter for the crops to consume. For the crops to effectively grow, they'll need a light source. You can achieve this by either having no roof above the planters so they can access the sun, or by installing ceiling lights above them. A single ceiling light can cover up to four planter boxes with a full 100% light condition. Ceiling lights will need to be powered with electricity. The easiest option includes crafting a solar panel, a small battery and possibly a switch. With the solar panel placed on your roof and battery inside, you can connect them using an electric wire tool. Connect the solar panel's output to the battery's input. You can then connect the battery's output directly to the ceiling light or to a switch and then to the ceiling light. So you can control when you want the lights on or off. For your tier 2 farming system, you'll now need a water barrel, small water catches, hose, fluid pump and sprinkler along with everything from tier 1. The workbench unlock cost for these items is 255 scrap. Firstly, place down your water barrel and fill it with fresh water. You can fill it by collecting fresh water with a bucket, bottle or jug. Once you have filled a bucket or bottle, head over to the barrel and open it. If you click on whatever item has the water in it, you'll see the transfer buttons appear. Now transfer the water from the bucket to the barrel. If you plan on doing this, I would recommend investing in a water jug, which can be purchased for 5 scrap at the Bandit Camp's food market. The jug can hold 5 litres of water when compared to the bucket's 2 litres, and can be stored away without spilling the contents. However, instead of the bucket or jug, you can have a passive income of water to help lighten the gathering load. Installing a small water catcher on your roof will generate 3 to 23 milliliters of water every minute. You can then connect this up to the barrel with a hose so the water trickles down into the storage. If you plan on having multiple catchers, you can join the catcher's water output to the other catcher's water input. Then use the final catcher's output to dump the water contents into the barrel. Next, you'll want to place down the fluid pump on a wall that you can easily access, since it will contain a switch for you to toggle on and off the watering. With the pump down, head into the growing room and place down sprinklers on the ceiling, directly above the planter boxes. A sprinkler can reach up to 6 planter boxes, with its water supply divided up equally between each box. For example, the sprinkler outputs 120 milliliters of water every minute. With 4 planter boxes, each box will only receive a total of 30 milliliters of water every minute. A large planter box full of hemp seeds will require 45 milliliters of water every minute, so it's best to have a sprinkler for every 2 planters within a small room, or one sprinkler for every planter if in a large farming room so it doesn't take ages to water your plants. With the barrel, pump and sprinkler placed down, connect them with the hose. With the hose in your hand, head over to the barrel and connect its water output to your pump's fluid input. Then connect the pump's fluid output to the sprinkler's input. Now you can power your pump by going up to your ceiling light and accessing its pass through node. This allows you to continue the power cable to the pump and power both the light and pump without needing to craft a splitter to further distribute the power to multiple sources. Finally, the tier 3 watering system requires a water pump, possibly a powered water purifier, and everything listed within the tier 2 system. The workbench blueprint cost for these items includes 900 scrap. These items will allow your farming system to become close to autonomous and easy to maintain. You will need to find a local water source which can be either a lake, river or ocean. If you decide to pump the water from the ocean, you'll also need a powered purifier to convert the salt water to fresh water. If you find a small lake or river, you can skip the purifier and place your pump down and connect it directly to your water barrel's water input using the hose. Also, remember you'll need to power the water pump, so it'll be best to create a second solar panel and a new battery to distribute power. The reason we need a new battery is the small battery only has a max power output of 10, and our water pump, fluid pump and lights will exceed this limit. So a second battery will allow us to allocate another 10 power out to the water pump. You can also craft a medium battery, which increases the max power output to 50, but considering it's a level 2 workbench craft, it'll just be easier to create a new solar panel and battery if you don't have the medium battery unlocked. It would also be best to include a switch for the outside pump, so you can turn it off when you are full on water. 
connect the second solar panel directly to the second battery and include a switch on the wall. Pass the power into the switch's input and connect the water pump to the switch output. Now with the water pump you don't have to continue to go outside and collect water or wait for your water catches to trickle down. Your only task is to now turn on the fluid pump in your house to water the plants and replant them. Each crop has 6 genetic slots that will considerably increase or hinder your farming potential. There are 5 genetic types you will find and includes G, Y, H, W and X. The G trait for growth rate indicates how quickly the plant grows through each stage. The quicker the growth, the faster your turnover is going to be. Next we have the Y trait for yield, which indicates how much of the plant's item you will receive when it's finished growing. You'll also want to pick up your crops anytime within the ripe stage, as you'll get the most cloth from its yield trait. The H trait is for hardiness and affects how well that seed will grow in poor conditions such as the snow. Now for the negative plant traits, we have the W trait for increased water intake. This will make it harder to keep your seed happy as you will need to provide it with more water compared to other crops around it. Finally we have the X trait for null slash empty and represents a wasted genetic slot that neither helps or hinders your crop. You'll want to gather multiple seeds and continue to plant and destroy them until you have a desired genetic set. Ideally, you'll want a set that contains no negative genetics with multiple Y and G traits to increase both the yield and growth rate. If you have a seed that has great genetics but unfortunately has one slot that contains an increased water or null trait, you can crossbreed to replace that genetic slot with something better. You can crossbreed by planting other seeds next to the primary seed you want to change. The seeds you place around will need to include a good trait in the slot your primary seed has a negative slot within. However, red genes are harder to replace compared to green traits, requiring two good traits to replace a red. Therefore, if you want to replace a bad gene, you'll need to surround it with at least two seeds that have the same green trait within that specific slot. Be careful as you can have a good genetic combination on a primary seed and ruin it because the crops around it have a negative genetic trait which the primary seed will use. If you finally have a plant with your desired genetic combination, you can hold E on it to make multiple clones of it. You can also use these clones to start making profits or reinforce specific traits during crossbreeding. You can completely ignore crossbreeding if you plant your seeds in the corner or edges of the planter and fill the gaps with other crops. This is the best layout to use to farm multiple crops and also avoid crossbreeding. If you have a successful hemp or corn farm up and running, you can start to sell your excess yield to the traders at the bandit camp. For 80 cloth or 15 corn, you can obtain 10 scrap. Therefore, if you can yield 800 cloth or 150 corn, you'll have a passive income of 100 scrap. Farming is an excellent way for you to become sustainable and create a positive income. The days of having to run around and collect hemp bushes or food are over and you can now do it in the comfort of your own home. You can either build a farm that is manual and easy or automated and hard, depending on your playstyle and resource requirements. Hopefully this video could clear things up with farming and genetics and if you enjoyed a like or sub would be appreciated. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.